Anna Place was a companion of the American outlaws Butch Cassidy, real name Robert Leroy Parker, and the Sundance Kid, Harry Alonzo Longabow, both members of the outlaw gang known as the Wild Bunch. Principally the companion of Longabow, little is known about her, both her origin and her fate remain shrouded in mystery. The Pinkerton Detective Agency described her in 1906 as having, classic good looks, 27 or 28 years old, 5 feet 4 inches to 5 feet 5 inches in height, weighing between 110 and 115 pounds, with a medium build and brown hair. Life with the Sundance Kid According to a memorandum from the Pinkerton Detective Agency, dated July 29, 1902, she was said, to be from Texas, and in another Pinkerton document dated 1906, she is described as being 27 to 28 years old, placing her birth between 1878 and 1879. A hospital staff record from Denver, where she received treatment in May 1900, reports her age as 22 or 23, putting her birth year at 1877 or 1878. Even her real name is a mystery. Place was the maiden surname of Longabow's mother, Annie Place, and she is recorded in various sources as Mrs. Harry Longabow or Mrs. Harry A. Place. In the one instance where she is known to have signed her name, she did so as Mrs. Ethel Place. The Pinkertons called her Ethel, Ethel, Eva, and Rita before finally settling on Etta for its wanted posters. Her name may have become Etta after she moved to South America where Spanish speakers could not pronounce Ethel. In February 1901, Etta Place accompanied Longabout to New York City, where at Tiffany's Jewelers they purchased a lapel watch and stick pin, and posed for the now-famous De Young portrait at a studio in Union Square on Broadway. It is one of only two known images of her. On February 20, 1901, she sailed with him and Parker, who was now posing as James Ryan, her fictional brother, aboard the British ship Herminius for Buenos Aires. There she settled with the two outlaws on a ranch which they purchased near Colila in the Chibut province of west-central Argentina. It comprised a four-room log cabin on the east bank of the Blanco River. Under a new 1884 law, they were granted 15,000 acres, 61 square kilometers, of adjacent land to develop, 2,500 of which belonged to Place, who has the distinction of being the first woman in Argentina to acquire land under the new act as land ownership previously had been almost the exclusive preserve of men. On March 3, 1902, she and Longabau returned to New York City on the SS Soldier Prince, probably to visit family and friends in the United States. On April 2, they registered at a Mrs. Thompson's rooming house in New York City. They toured Coney Island and visited his family, originally from Montclair, Pennsylvania, but by then living in Atlantic City, New Jersey. They also possibly traveled to a Dr. Pierce's Invalid Hotel in Buffalo, New York for unspecified medical treatment. They then traveled west, where again they sought medical treatment, this time in Denver, Colorado. They returned to Buenos Aires from New York on July 10, 1902 aboard the steamer Honorius, posing as stewards. On August 9, she was with Longabau at the Hotel Europa in Buenos Aires, and on the 15th, she sailed with him aboard the steamer SS Chibut to return to their ranch. In the summer of 1904, she made another visit with Longabau to the United States, where the Pinkerton Detective Agency traced them to Fort Worth, Texas, and to the St. Louis World Fair, but failed to arrest them before they returned to Argentina. In early 1905, the trio sold the Colila Ranch, as once again the law was beginning to catch up with them. The Pinkerton Agency had known their precise address for some months, but the rainy season prevented their assigned agent Frank DeMaio from traveling there and making an arrest. Governor Julio Lezina issued an arrest warrant, but before it could be executed, 
Sheriff Edward Humphreys, a Welsh Argentine who was friendly with Parker and enamoured of place, tipped them off. The trio fled north to San Carlos de Bariloche, where they embarked on the steamer Condor across Lake Nahuelhuapi and into Chile. By the end of that year, however, they were again back in Argentina, on December 19, 1904, Place took part, along with Longabau, Parker and an unknown male, in the robbery of the Banco de la Nación in Villa Mercedes, 400 miles west of Buenos Aires. Pursued by armed lawmen, they crossed the Pampas and the Andes and again into Chile. Place had long been tired of life on the run and deeply lamented the loss of their ranch. At her request, on June 30, 1906, Longabau accompanied her from Valparaiso, Chile to San Francisco, where she apparently remained while he returned permanently to South America. There is no evidence that Longabau and Place ever saw one another again after that. Mysteries Those who had met Place claimed the first thing they noticed about her was that she was strikingly pretty, with a very nice smile, and that she was cordial, refined and an excellent shot with a rifle. She was said to have spoken in an educated manner, and she indicated she was originally from the East Coast, although she never revealed an exact location. Eyewitnesses indicated, years afterward, that Place was one of only five women known to have been allowed into the Wild Bunch hideout at Robber's Roost in southern Utah, the other four having been Will Carver's girlfriend Josie Bassett, who also was involved with Parker for a time. Josie's sister and Parker's longtime girlfriend Ann Bassett, Elsie Lay's girlfriend Maud Davis, and gang member Laura Bullion. She was speculated to have once married a schoolteacher, and at least one person claimed Place said she was a teacher who abandoned her husband and two children to be with Longabau. The claim that she met the gang while working as a prostitute also is widely believed. Some claim that Place was originally Parker's lover and became involved with Longabau later and that she met both while working in a brothel as a prostitute. Both of those claims are possible as members of the Wild Bunch gang often alternated girlfriends. It is possible that she met Parker and Slash or Longabau in the brothel of Madame Fanny Porter in San Antonio, which was frequented by members of the Wild Bunch gang. In fact, through Madame Porter's, Several gang members met girlfriends who later traveled with them, including Kid Curry and prostitute Della Moore and Will Carver and Lily Davis. Wild Bunch female gang member Laura Bullion is believed to have worked at the brothel from time to time. Identity Theories Ethel Bishop It has been suggested that Place's real name was Ethel Bishop, who lived at a similar establishment around the corner from Madame Porter's at 212 Conco Street. On the 1900 census, Bishop's occupation was given as an unemployed music teacher. She was 23 then, born in West Virginia in September 1876. The Ethel Bishop hypothesis neatly combines the stories that she was a schoolteacher or that she was a prostitute in one person. Ann Bassett Another conjecture is that she was a cattle rustler named Ann Bassett. 1878-1956, who knew and operated with the Wild Bunch at the turn of the 20th century. Both Bassett and Place were attractive women, with similar facial features, body frame, and hair color. Bassett was born in 1878, the same year Place was thought to have been born. Dr. Thomas G. Kyle of the Computer Research Group at Los Alamos National Laboratory who performed many photographic comparisons for government intelligence agencies, conducted a series of tests on photographs of Etta Place and Ann Bassett. Both had the same scar or cowlick at the top of their forehead. Dr. Kyle concluded that there could be no reasonable doubt they were the same person. Historian Doris Karen Burton also investigated the lives of both women and published a book in 1992 claiming they were one and the same. However, Bassett's and Place's chronologies do not align. Several documents prove that Bassett was in Wyoming during much of the time when Place was in South America. 
Bassett was arrested and briefly incarcerated in Utah for rustling cattle in 1903, while Place was Indiana South America with Longabow and Parker. Bassett also married her first husband in Utah that year, and therefore, could not have been in South America during that time. Eunice Gray A once popular theory held that she was Eunice Gray, who for many years operated a bordello in Fort Worth, Texas, and later ran the Waco Hotel there until her death in a fire in January 1962. Gray once told Delbert Willis of the Fort Worth Press, I've lived in Fort Worth since 1901. That is except for the time I had to hightail it out of town. Went to South America for a few years, until things settled down. Willis conceded that Gray never claimed to be at a place, he merely made that connection on his own, given the similarities in their ages, and the period in which Gray said she went to South America coinciding with Place's time there. Gray was described as a beautiful woman, and Willis believed that Place and Gray held a striking resemblance to one another, but there were no known photographs of Gray from that period to compare with Place's. Then, in 2007, amateur genealogist Donna Donnell found Eunice Gray on a 1911 passenger list from Panama. Following that lead, she tracked down Gray's niece, who had two photographs of her, one taken at her high school graduation circa 1896, and another taken in the 1920s. Comparing those photos to places, both agreed that Eunice Gray was definitely not at a place. Madeline Wilson Yet another theory posits that Place was actually Madeline Wilson, a girl in Fanny Porter's brothel. Sleuther Tony Hayes notes that of the five girls in Fanny's boarding house, all were born in or around 1878-80. One girl, 22-year-old Wilson, appeared in the 1900 census records of Bayhar County, Texas, immediately beneath Madame Porter's name. Like Porter, Wilson was listed as being of English birth, immigrating to the United States in 1884 at the age of six. Hayes theorizes that Wilson changed her name, and that her British accent, tempered by 16 years in America, might be described as refined. All traces of Wilson disappeared after the 1900 census after Place and Longabow left town. Life after Longabow There is still considerable debate over when Place's relationship with Longabow ended. Some claims indicate that Place ended her relationship with Longabow and returned to the United States before his death. Other claims indicate that the two remained romantically involved and that she simply tired of life in South America. By 1907, she was known to have been living in San Francisco, but after that, the trail runs cold. After Longabow's death, some believe that she returned to New York City while other theories indicate she moved back to Texas and started a new life there. A Pinkerton report indicates that a woman matching Place's description was killed in a shootout resulting from a domestic dispute with a man named Mateo Gebhardt in Chibut, Argentina in March 1922. Another report indicates she committed suicide in 1924 in Argentina, and another report indicates that she died of natural causes in 1966. In 1909, a woman matching Place's description asked Frank Aller, U.S. Vice Consul in Antofagasta, Chile, for assistance in obtaining a death certificate for Longabow. No such certificate was issued, and the woman's identity was never ascertained. There have been various additional claims about her life after Longabow died. One claim is that she returned to her life as a schoolteacher living the remainder of her life in Denver, Colorado, and another story claims she lived the remainder of her life teaching in Marion, Oregon. There are also various claims that she returned to prostitution, living the remainder of her life in Texas or New York or California. However, none of these claims has any supporting evidence. Author Richard Llewellyn claimed that while in Argentina he found indications that Place had moved to Paraguay following the death of Longabau, and that she had married a wealthy man. 
There also were rumors that Etta Place was in fact Edith May, wife of famous boxing promoter Tex Ricard, who retired to a ranch in Paraguay shortly after promoting the famous fight between Jack Johnson and Jim Jeffries in 1910. Author and researcher Larry Pointer, author of the 1977 book In Search of Butch Cassidy, wrote that Place's identity and fate are one of the most intriguing riddles in Western history. Leads develop only to dissolve into ambiguity. Fact timelines generally accepted by historians. 1899-1900, Place was living in Texas and being courted by Harry A. Longabout, a.k.a. the Sundance Kid. Some stories claim Place was a housekeeper or possibly a prostitute in Fanny Porter's sporting house during this time. December 1900, Place and Longabout reportedly marry, with his using the alias of Harry A. Place, shortly after he is photographed in the famous Fort Worth Five photo. However, there are no marriage records to prove this. January 1901 Longabout and Place visit his family in Montclair, Pennsylvania. February 1901, Longabout and Place visit New York City and Tiffany's Jewelers. February 20, 1901, Longabout and Place board the RMS Herminius bound for Buenos Aires. March 3, 1902, Longabout and Place sail on the ship SS Soldier Prince from Argentina to New York City. Pinkerton detectives find evidence that Place was homesick and wanting to visit her family, but were unable to identify who her family was. April 2, 1902, Longabout and Place register at Mrs. Thompson's boarding house in New York City, and visit members of his family in Atlantic City, New Jersey, then visit Coney Island. July 10, 1902, Place and Longabout pose as stewards and sail on the steamer Honorius back to Argentina. August 9, 1902, Place registers them at the Hotel Europa in Buenos Aires. Early to late 1903, Parker's former lover Ann Bassett marries a rancher by the name of Henry Bernard, and shortly thereafter is arrested for rustling. Summer 1904, Place and Longabow sail again to New York City to visit her family. Once again Pinkerton detectives discover she is homesick, but cannot discover the identity of her family. May 1, 1905, Place, Longabout and Parker decide to sell their ranch in Colilla, Argentina and leave South America to avoid the law there. Longabout and Place sail to San Francisco, where she remains, and he returns to South America. 1907, Place is living alone in San Francisco, and there is no evidence she has seen Longabout since his departure two years prior. July 31, 1909, a woman matching Place's description attempts to obtain a death certificate following Longabout's death in Bolivia so that she can settle his estate. She disappears from all historical records after that. With Longabout dead, Pinkerton's interest in her location wanes and her trail goes cold. Media Depictions In the film Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Etta Place is depicted as a schoolteacher. Screenwriter William Goldman was suspicious of claims that Place was a prostitute, he believed she was too attractive and vibrant to have worked as a prostitute, a profession that tended to age women prematurely and tax their health. Place was portrayed by Catherine Ross. Elizabeth Montgomery portrayed Etta Place in Mrs. Sundance, a highly fictionalized 1974 television movie. Catherine Ross reprised her role as Etta Place in Wanted, The Sundance Woman, a fictional 1976 made-for-television movie. In the 1994 TV movie The Gambler V, Playing for Keeps, she is played by Mariska Hargitay. In the 2004 TV movie The Legend of Butch and Sundance, Rachel Lefevre plays Etta Place. Etta Place was portrayed by Dominique McElligot in the 2011 film Blackthorn. Etta Place was the central character in Etta, a novel by Gerald Kalpan published in 2009 by Ballantine Books. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.